Today's gospel can often, can often lead us to an erroneous conclusion. God saves the poor for being poor and condemns the rich for being rich. And nothing is farther from reality. God loves each human being with infinite love, with total love, a love that no, does not take into account what we have, what we possess, but instead a love that loves us for who we are. So let us see then in detail what led the rich men to the place of torment and the poor Lazarus for his, to his resting place in the bosom of Abraham. The first reading prepares us for today's gospel with the warning of the prophet Amos. The prophet condemns the people of Israel for living in the midst of sloth, laziness, luxury, and gluttony, while they, they ignore their brothers and sisters in need. Likewise, in the gospel, the rich man is living a life of comfort and ease. He is living a life totally focused on himself, a selfish life that leads him to be indifferent to the sufferings of those around him. His life of luxury and his life of gluttony led him to stop loving his neighbor and to stop caring for the poor and the sick who were right there at his door. The problem with the rich man is not so much that he did something wrong. The problem is that he did nothing at all. One can imagine the rich man walking out of his walking out his front gate each day, carefully stepping over Lazarus, intensely trying not to notice his need, and trying to avoid doing anything to alleviate his suffering. All it would have taken taken was a little food, a little bit of human kindness, some clean clothing a decent coat, and a warm hat. Very practical things, and perhaps things that the rich man had in abundance and could easily have shared with someone in need, but he didn't. When someone is in need, we may not be able to solve all their problems, but we can often do little things with great care to ease their sadness and suffering. All that is needed is a little food, some clean used clothes, a bottle, a bottle of water, and a cereal or a cereal bar, a gift card to a fast food restaurant, a listening ear, and a prayerful heart. The willingness to give these little, little bits of ourselves, ourselves can ease the burdens of another. It is good to keep this in mind as the weather begins to cool, cold, cold, and the nights become longer. Another element to highlight is that eternal life is prepared every day by living a life of virtue. Or as St. Paul put it, puts it in the second reading, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Fight the good fight of the faith. And do it, do it right now. The rich man was selfish and indifferent to the sufferings of others. And he remains the same in eternal life. Being in the place of torment when he sees Abraham with Lazarus in the distance, what was the first thing he did? Did he ask forgiveness for not having helped Lazarus with his basic needs? 
did he express his remorse for having ignored Lazarus his entire life? No, he didn't. He didn't even say a word to Lazarus. He continued to ignore and disregard him as a human being. The only thing that occurred to him was that he could, he could use Lazarus as an errand boy, as a messenger. And that's why he asked Abraham to send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool his tongue. And when Abraham said that this was not possible, because between them there was a chasm that could not be crossed, the rich man still insisted on using Lazarus. This situation helped us to realize that people remain the same after they die, that they take with them their ways of thinking, preferences, qualities, and defects. And this is what determines their final destiny in eternity. As someone once said, death closes the door of a room you had already entered. That is our actions today determine what will become of us tomorrow. God abundantly offers us his graces and his mercy in this life, but he gives them freely, no imposes them. And whoever has lived in this world rejecting God's grace and mercy will probably continue rejecting them in the life in the after war. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are dependent upon one another, and we are dependent upon God. We are all needy people. That is why we admit in this Eucharist we are a people in need. We need God's love. We need God's forgiveness. We need our Savior who freely offers himself to save us and bring us to eternal life. In this Eucharist, Jesus reaches out to each of us as we reach out with our hands and with our hearts. Jesus offers us his love and comfort in his body and blood so that we can share that with those around us. So let us finish today with a prayer attribute to Saint Teresa of Calcutta, but probably from an unknown author. Lord, when I am hungry, give me someone in need of food. When I am thirsty, send me someone needing a drink. When I am cold, send me someone to warm. When I am grieved, offer me someone to consult. When my cross grows heavy, let me share another cross. When I think only of myself, draw my thoughts to another. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve our fellow men throughout the world who live and died in poverty and hunger. Give them through our hands this day their, da their daily bread. And by our, our understanding love, give peace and joy. Amen.